श्रोताओं आप देख रहे हैं सुन रहे हैं रेडियो मनपसंद जी हाँ पूरा तड़का लगा के मैं हूं आपका मनपसंद आरजे मनीष और आप सभी को मैं कहता हूं सप्रेम नमस्कार और सलाम नमस्ते दोस्तों आज मेरे साथ एक विशेष मेहमान है मैं इनसे आपको इंट्रोड्यूस कराता हूं मिलवाता हूं और इनसे बातों का तड़का लगेगा आप देखते रहिए लगे रहिए यस वी हैव विद अस ऑनरेबल मिनिस्टर फॉर मल्टीकल्चरल अफेयर्स इन द एसीटी गवर्नमेंट तारा चेन एंड तारा चेन हैज गॉट डिफरेंट पोर्टफोलियोज एज वेल शी इज मिनिस्टर फॉर आर्ट्स शी इज मिनिस्टर फॉर बिजनेस मिनिस्टर फॉर ह्यूमन राइट वेलकम तारा टू रेडियो मन पर्सन हेलो एंड नमस्ते नमस्ते Hey, thank you so much for How having me. How um, are you? How are you? I'm really well, thank you. Um, I think that uh, we were just talking about uh, I started off the year uh, inauspiciously with a, a broken ankle, and I've uh, just uh, last week come out of the the moon boot cast. So I'm um, just getting back that that flexibility. So my mood is improving. <laughs> <laughs> You broke your ankle just yeah. after the elections or before the elections? Uh, after the election, but um, just after the new year. So, um, you know, was... not in the parliament house. No, no, no. Some people walking up the stairs or something. No, no. It was even less glamorous than oh, that. Yeah. I I slipped in a puddle. Um, oh, is it? Yeah, uh, while I was on holiday. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Pretty sad. Okay, now you now you're feeling okay. Yeah, everything. yeah, yeah. Just yeah. getting back that that movement in okay. my ankle. That's yeah. good. Good to hear. Tell us about yourself and your journey, political journey. Yeah, sure. Well, make sure you cut me off if I if I talk for too long. <laughs> no, that's all right. Um, so I grew up all over um, Queensland. My parents had a, a range of different career changes. Um, I was born in Cairns, and they um, had a Mexican restaurant at the time. And uh, uh, after that, my dad became a, a taxi cab driver. Uh, my mum went to uni as a mature age student, and then um, we spent a lot of time in mining towns. So I've really been all over um, Queensland. And right. I studied uh, journalism and arts at the University of Queensland in Brisbane. Right. Um, but uh, I'd, I'd interned as a as a journalist at a, a paper at a newspaper, and I'd really I really um, valued the work, but I. I just didn't feel like I had the the passion to give it all to it, and um, and I was good at it. I was offered a job at the end of it, but I I just thought mate, that I feel like I need to have something where I've got an even greater you know connection to the work. Right. Um, but I didn't know what what the answer was. Uh, <laughs> but I I thought that I I wanted to move to Canberra and and be a little bit closer to political action generally. So I got a. A public service job um, as a graduate in the attorney general's department, mm. and um, and uh, when I first moved to Canberra, I, I didn't like it. Um, I I I, um, I I really missed Queensland. I I moved here. I didn't have any uh, established links in Canberra. Okay. Mm. Um, but once I moved to Belconnen, I just fell in love with it, <laughs> and it all made a lot of sense to me then. And um, and that was the start of my political journey. So from sunshine to cold. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you didn't like the cold, or uh, I th I think it was just it was a really big change for me. You know, I really um, uh, all of my my friends and family were in Queensland. I had no one um, south of the border, so right. to speak. <laughs> so. Um, uh, moving to Canberra was a really big leap of faith um, for me. I'm an only child, so I was quite close to my parents as well. And um, uh, but I, I and I felt like um, I, I was still so connected to Queensland. But when I moved to Belconnen, I felt like I'd really found my hometown. Right. And um, <laughs> and that's when Canberra really started to make a lot of sense oh, for okay. me. And when I I fell fell in love and I fell hard. <laughs> From Cairns to Canberra, we call it this way, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> isn't that great? Yeah. So why politics? Because the, yeah, as you said, the qualification in Bachelor of Arts, I, I can see a Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor okay. of Journalism, yeah. you worked in Attorney General Office, yep. and then into Department of Finance before you got uh, yeah. elected in 2016. Yeah, that's right. So why politics? So um, the, the missing part of that story is that in 2007, I joined the Labor Party, which um, people might remember that was the year that Kevin Rudd became Prime Minister. So there was a very big Ke changeover. Kevin's 07. Kevin 07, that's right. <laughs> and, and you'll see I've, I've still got a Kevin poster up over there. <laughs> is it? Okay, I can do that. <laughs> yeah, barely hanging there, but it's right. all faded. Uh, and I've even got a I've got a Kevin I7 t-shirt which I can right. show you later as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, 
uh, but you know that was a really big turning point for me and um, I, the, the Labor Party just had these values I was really attracted to and so I'd been a really active member um, of the Labor Party for quite a few years and um, uh, and in the, the meantime, uh, in my spare time, I, um, while I was working my public service job, I became really involved in the Belconnen community and um, joined the Belconnen Community Council. I ended up being the chair of that community council and, and I just um, felt really committed to the area that um, had made me feel at home. Right. And I, I just, there was one point where I thought, um, you know, this, this sort of work, um, this community work is something that, that I really love, that passion we were talking about <laughs> before um, that I'd been looking for a, a decade earlier. Right. And I, I thought I'd found it and I decided to just give everything I could into to running uh, right. and to being a, um, a candidate in the election. And, and I was very lucky to be successful. Very nice. You got elected twice last year yeah. in October again. Yep. And, and you have been now appointed as a minister, yeah. which is the first time minister. Yeah. How do you feel being a uh, minister and uh, what is the best thing I would say as an MLA or, um, or as a minister? I think the best thing about being an MLA um, uh, as a starting point is meeting people right. and, and making a difference. It's very simple but um, when you when you know that you've touched someone's lives uh, or someone's life and you've, you've made it for the better, um, there's no greater feeling than that. Um, but just establishing personal connections with people and really understanding you know, what makes someone tick, but also is, is there a way that I might be able to help them and being able to help somebody, that, that I think is the, the very best thing about like, being an MLA. You're a people person. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. <laughs> uh, as a minister, a minister I, responsibilities I, I, Increases. Yeah, that's right. And particularly, um, you get to, to set a bit more of the vision yourself about um, what you'd like to achieve, um, uh, the direction that you want things to go in. Um, you can certainly influence that uh, as an MLA, absolutely. But I think as a, a minister, um, there's just a little bit more capacity to do that. Well, what's your daily routine uh, if they, as, a, as a minister? Great question and a really hard question as well. Um, I think for everybody it's really different and, and for me, um, my roles, um, particularly as Minister for Multicultural Affairs, Minister for the Arts and Minister for Business, a lot of that is very public facing. Um, so I'm uh, doing lots of events, speaking at lots of events, um, having lots and lots of meetings as we were just talking about. Yep, yep. Um, so every day looks, looks quite different. But but um, always very people-centred. Um, we do get a, a lot of information that we have to absorb as well, so I do try to block out a bit of time in each day just to you know, um, uh, have that, that quiet time to be able to read and process. Um, I really am, uh, the way that I learn is um, really uh, kinesthetic, so interacting with people or doing things uh, or otherwise reading, but I, I, need the, <laughs> I need to not be distracted and I can easily right. be distracted. So, how did you cope with COVID-19, if you want to say what changes you have to make or you had to make yeah. during your, as a role as a MLA or as a minister? Yeah, I think one of the, the biggest changes for me and for everybody was um, uh, suddenly we didn't have those events and those face-to-face -face meetings and how to, to still maintain that really important connection with the community. I think that's something that everyone was really craving. and. Um, uh, it's coming up to the anniversary actually, actually but um, it was March 16 that uh, just I was at home. It had been a really um, uh, intense day here in the assembly. I'd said to my staff, I think we'll be working from home for, from now on. And, and I'd gone home and, and I was kind of just watching TV to, to really relax. And in doing that, I, I went, I think I, I might just do a video um, and, and publish that on Facebook and, and just check in with everybody and just say, how are you doing? Mm. You know, hasn't today been a lot? You know, things are kind of changing every few hours. Mm. And I ended up um, doing more than 200 videos in a row uh, every Is single it? night. Yeah. On the Facebook or YouTube? On Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, yes. just just updating people, 
people. I would give the, the COVID um, mm. statistics in the ACT, but um, every time there was new information coming forward, but it was also, it was it ended up being more than that for a lot of people, I think. You know, it, it gave people a bit of routine to their days, mm. um, you know, that they had, um, uh, they knew, uh, there were a lot of people who told me that there was so much news to absorb every day yeah. that, that having me just kind of distill it into five minutes was mm. really useful for them. And and even now I had um, had someone um, deliver some Uber Eats to me the, the other <laughs> week and, and they said, oh, Tara, uh, I really you know valued your, your Facebook updates during that time. My wife and I watched them. Amazing. And um, yeah, so just knowing that that, that had a, a real sense of um, keeping that community connection mm. alive. Um, but it was a big change. It was. And it doing was. a, a video every that. night. <laughs> So what are the challenges for the government as a fight with this pandemic and now vaccine has been rolled out in ACT? Yeah, you want to... look, I think um, that it's uh, 2020 was really difficult and I think um, that 2021 is still going to be hard. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the, the way I've been characterising it um, this year has been in the community, I feel like there's this sense of um, exhausted hope um, or exhausted urgency in, in some ways and that we're all really quite tired from 2020, mm. um, but um, we're all really hopeful um, <laughs> about what this year holds. And But we also feel that, that 2020 is the lost year, so we That's have to right. make up for time. Sure. And um, uh, so there's, in some ways, I feel like there's more demands um, on everybody than ever before. That's right. And and while we have um, in Australia and particularly in Canberra handled the pandemic so well, um, uh, comparatively at least, uh, it doesn't mean that we we haven't been um, we've been managing it the entire time while getting on with all the other work too. Right. Um, so it's kind of been double the workload <laughs> for everybody. And yeah. I, I think that that is an ongoing challenge. And, yeah. um, but this year, I think it, it's um, you know, keeping up that positivity. I think, um, you know, we still are in such a good position here mm. um, in the ACT and in Australia and um, just, you know, moving forward and um, being very hopeful about what the end of That's the year right. could look like. I've been telling all my listeners and family and friends that Canberra is the best place yeah. in the world to live and, and it has been during the COVID-19, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. So as a multicultural minister or as a minister for arts and uh, uh, as a business and, yeah. and, and, and human rights, what are your plans? Have you... Yeah, there's lots of plans. I think sometimes the biggest challenge is how much I want to do um, in the, the time that I've got available to me. But um, I, I think I can I can summarise it uh, as at least the, the things I really want to see quite a bit of movement on this year. So um, in the art space very broadly, I want to cement our place as a as an art city and a, as a place that's really attractive to be an artist. Um, and uh, whether that's as um, whatever stage in your career as, a, as an artist, if, if you're doing it as a hobby um, or if you're um, an amateur artist or a professional artist, that there's opportunities here for you um, in the ACT. And, and that obviously has some, um, some economic development aspects to it as well. Right. With human rights, it's, it's um, uh, tied quite closely with multicultural uh, affairs as well as mm. you know, making sure that Canberra remains such a livable and inclusive city. And, uh, and there's a, a few small things um, uh, that I'm looking forward to, to having in place, um, hopefully by mid-year, which is being able to, um, uh, for, for family members of someone who donated their, their organs, um, that that can be reflected on their death certificate, which is, will be an Australian first. Mm -hmm. um, but also um, families will be able to um, uh, apply to receive a, a, um, a certificate um, if they uh, have been through an early pregnancy loss. Right. Um, so, you know, these are, are small things that we can do as a government that means so much um, from a family aspect. Um, business and, and better regulation simply just want to make it easier mm -hmm. and simpler to do business mm -hmm. uh, here in the ACT. And we've got a better regulation task force, which is um, looking at how to make it 
um, how to make processes smooth, smoother um, or more straightforward um, um, so that it's again attractive and, and that Canberra is seen as a fertile place to do business. Right. And you know, so many members of our um, multicultural community are business people mm. um, and, and so fundamentally uh, get that as well. But we're really looking to um, implement a um, Multicultural Recognition Act in the ACT, which um, will um, uh, then legislate for the Multicultural Advisory Council that um, currently assists me, um, uh, but will also uh, legislate for a, a multicultural charter. So really um, um, putting into place in legislation those values um, that we hold so dear in mm. what makes Canberra such a, an attractive and inclusive and diverse city. Wonderful. Talking of multiculturalism, uh, yeah. the hot topic of the election was multicultural whole, which is lacking here in ACT or Canberra, and which was, I think, every uh, every party's agenda, <laughs> multicultural yeah. hall. Uh, do you have any plans for that? Multicultural? Yeah, so um, I, my understanding is that work is going to be led by the, the Chief Minister because uh, ultimately it's a very big infrastructure project, mm -hmm. um, but uh, certainly it will be something as, as Minister for Multicultural Affairs that, that I'll be heavily um, feeding into and, and we'll be looking to um, engage very closely with the multicultural community about. Um, yes, it was a very hot topic um, <laughs> during the election. I believe all three parties committed to it. Absolutely. And, uh, and it is very firmly in the parliamentary and governing agreement um, as uh, as an election commitment to mm -hmm. um, uh, to be worked on and delivered in this term of government. So um, look forward to, to saying more about it in the future. Wonderful. And there was no multicultural yeah. festival this year, which was very sad in, in the history of, I think, for so many years. We yeah. I have been here for the last 25 years and I, I have been actively participating yeah. in festival. So any such festivals happening in ACT or in Canberra in the near future in, in this year yeah. or should we only look forward to next year? So uh, first of all I just want to um, really thank the multicultural community for their understanding um, about not having the festival this year. I, um, I don't think anyone's more disappointed than me I have to say. <laughs> it, it's my favourite festival. I've never missed one either. Mm. Um, but I think um, I think we all fundamentally understand what the National Multicultural Festival is about is is that it, it, it it's big but it's dense and you know the, what's so special about the spirit of it is that you can um, just within a few steps you can be in another different culture and experiencing sure. something different and um, just where we are at the moment um, uh, with the pandemic, I don't think we're as, as far progressed as we would have liked to be, to be able to hold a multicultural festival at any point this year. Right. Um, uh, but we do have confidence that we'll be in a really good position for a February, um, as usual, multicultural mm. festival in 2022, um, where we can still capture that that spirit of coming together um, and that, that density element uh, of it as well. Um, but that's not to say that uh, <laughs> that community groups um, shouldn't be holding their festivals this mm -hmm. year, and uh, and I know that um, the the Glendy is coming up for the Greek yep. community in March. Um, but uh, you know, my my message to the multicultural communities is there will still be ways to to hold different smaller festivals, and and absolutely, please. Um, we, we want to make sure we're still capturing <laughs> that and, and already um, you know there have been um, different national days that have been held um, yes. all marked this year mm -hmm. um, uh, obviously we had the um, uh, the, the Republic of India Day um, just the, the other week yep. um, uh, that was celebrated, and even though it um, coincides with Australia Australia, Day. Australia, yep. um, it was the Mon National Day, just on um, celebrated on Saturday. So right. um, communities are still um, holding um, <laughs> um, these celebrations yep. and these festivities, uh, and I, I absolutely encourage that. Beautiful. Now, changing the topic. <laughs> What are your pastimes or hobbies, if I do ask you? Like, yeah. what do you do when there's no assembly, there's no, there's no discussion or meeting with the people? What do you do normally? Yeah, it's a great question. It's not <laughs> not many times when that happens. I have to say, uh, I think one of the the, the beauties of my role um, now, especially as minister. Um, uh, across the portfolios that I have, uh, there are many there are portfolios where I already had a, a really active interest in my spare time. Mm -hmm. um, so there's plenty of things that, that don't feel um, like work by any <laughs> means, even if they might be right. um, 
you know, like attending a festival or um, or, um, or an event or an event um, or, or something at the theatre, something related okay. to the arts. Yeah. Um, those are, are, are all real pastimes for me as well. I really um, like travel, oh, yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, obviously we've been, you can't. Um, <laughs> we can't. And um, uh, but I, I've been actively thinking about where I might like to go <laughs> next. I think you know there's just so much to learn. Um, but in the meantime, there's so much to learn from Absolutely. each other. So we're very lucky to have such a diverse um, cultural representation here right. in the ACT. Um, and finally, I really um, I like spending time with my dog. Um, oh, okay. So I've, I've got a, a tiny little dog. She doesn't quite weigh four right. kilos. Um, and uh, uh, just being out with her and, and seeing the delight that she takes in the everyday <laughs> just kind of reminds me what's important too. Um, that, you know, we've got a beautiful community here. We've got a beautiful environment. Right. And uh, there's so much on our doorstep. So being able to, to go out walking with her and, and being out just in the, um, the in beautiful Canberra mm. uh, is something that I, I like to do. Talking about arts, because you've got a Bachelor in Arts, do you do something? Uh, Art-related activity, painting, uh, theatre? Uh, so or maybe do you listen to radio, I think? Yes, <laughs> yes shall I, ask you? I, I certainly listen to a lot of radio. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I probably had a, a very light touch um, musical career in my early primary, um, primary school years, just learning to play mm. piano. Um, my my real passion is writing. Right. Um, I really like yeah. writing and communicating, which the journalism degree feeds yeah, into as well. Um, but I, uh, I I quite like poetry. I um, and I, I like writing short stories and right. things like that. But my um, the, the time it takes to do that, I again it's it's um, just <laughs> finding the the moment to do so. Talking of music, do you like Indian music or the Bollywood music? Yeah, no, absolutely. And and look, something as as <laughs> multicultural affairs minister, I'd, I'm looking forward to to getting even more exposed to it. I think I mm. think my opportunities in the past have been a bit limited, um, and uh, and now I have no excuse whatsoever. <laughs> so um, um, bring it at me. I I, I want to get much more One. involved. Have you been to India? I haven't. Okay. I have not. Any plans in the near future? Uh, we'll, we'll see what once COVID it's COVID holds. free or yeah. world or tra international travel. So. Yeah, look, I, I'd love to. I'd love to go. Um, it, it's certainly on the bucket list. Um, and and again, I it sounds like um, from everything um, my friends and family have said to me, and and um, and many people have been, including my parents. Um, you know that uh, it's not just somewhere for one trip uh, that you need to go back. And, <laughs> Absolutely. You know, there's more and more layers to it's, peel back each time. It's a very multicultural country. That's right. And a lot of. Uh, have you tried Indian food? Do you like Indian food? Yeah, absolutely. Spicy or yeah, just mild? Yeah. Uh, everything. Um, uh, there's probably a limit to my, my spice <laughs> <laughs> and how much I can take, but I'm I'm training myself over Wonderful. time, uh, particularly in advance of things like the curry festival. Any, any favorite dish? Uh, I think anything uh, that's cooked in the tandoor is... Um, tandoor, yeah, yeah. Butter yeah. chicken or something? Or yeah, just, I like butter just... chicken, but you know, tandoori chicken. Um, uh, but I also really like um, palak paneer. Oh, um, yeah, so, nice. um, uh, but um, the more I the more I try, the more I like. <laughs> <laughs> Talking of food, any favorite uh, place you normally go to? A cafe or restaurant you normally oh, like in yeah. Canberra, or your uh, constituency of Jinindira or Belconnen? Yeah, yeah. so um, uh, I live in the Belconnen town centre, so. Um, I'm quite spoilt for choice in terms of, of Indian um, uh, restaurants. And so um, for, from an Indian restaurant perspective, uh, Punjabi Junction oh. uh, or Indian Bay. They're On my, the Chandler Street, isn't it? Yeah, yep. Uh, and um, and they both have an excellent um, cauliflower, 65 or Gobi 65. Oh, okay, you like that. Um, that's my favourite. That's actually my favourite. Oh, yeah, nice. um, uh, but... Uh, I think we're just so lucky to have um, such a wide variety of restaurants um, in the ACT and um, I, I think probably my, my special occasion favourite restaurant is the Boathouse um, oh. uh, or Rebel Rebel, both of those I, nice. I really Very like. Nice. Yeah. Any message to the multicultural community before we end this interview? Yeah, uh, sure. I just, um, I think I want to say most sincerely just how um, grateful I am um, for the, the leadership and the community connection that the multicultural community um, has shown and maintained um, through this most difficult year. Mm. It has been, um, goes without saying how hard it's been. And, um, 
but I think Canberra has just been exemplary, not in how we've we've handled the pandemic, but how the community has come together and um, the multicultural communities have been at the forefront of that. Um, I, I'm hearing um, all the time these stories of just where people put their hands up, mm. you know, um, things that no one really knows about, no. um, but but things that um, where gaps were filled or um, people were were reaching out um, and uh, just you know making sure that um, people didn't feel isolated um, and whether that was a phone call or delivering mm. meals mm. or um, teaching people how to use zoom you, know, I, um, I, you can't put a price tag on mm. that and uh, i just want to thank everyone so sincerely um, for for all of their efforts during what's been such a difficult time Lovely. It was lovely talking to you, Tara. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. And uh, I hope listeners who are listening on the radio show and watching us on Facebook or YouTube, they would have loved. Uh, it was a good introduction of yours. Oh, thank uh, you. Yep, that's it. All the best. Thanks very much. Hopefully and, we and, can have and, many and, more conversations. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Tara Chain, ACT Minister for Multicultural Affairs. You're listening to Radio Manpasand, Tadka Lagake.